My name is Devin Nicholson and I'm from Ottawa, Ontario. Ever since I or my parents can remember, all I've ever wanted to do was be a professional wrestler. Never played with any other toys, never really had any interest in any other sport. From the time I was able to talk, all I wanted to do was wrestle. I played with toy wrestlers, I watched nothing but wrestling videos. I put on wrestling shows in my backyard from the time I was about six years old. When I was a kid, I looked up to guys like Macho Man Randy Savage, Ric Flair, The Undertaker. And these guys were my heroes and I wanted to be like them. Pro wrestling was very magical to me. It was like a superhero, but they were real superheroes. And they got to perform in front of live audiences. And it was a combination of acting, entertainment and athleticism that nothing else really provided and I thought it'd be the coolest job on earth. You're traveling around performing in front of 20,000 people every night. Everyone looks up to you. How the wrestlers look, they look superhuman and I thought they were just the coolest people on earth. My name is Max Moskal and I'm from Orleans, Ontario, Canada. For the past four years I followed Devin Nicholson in his pursuit to become a professional wrestler. Join me now in This is Hannibal. I started my wrestling career. I had won the junior nationals in amateur wrestling. I won OFSA, which is the high school championships in amateur wrestling. And I was on the national team in amateur wrestling. And I was offered quite a few scholarships for amateur wrestling. Eric Bischoff, um, who was in charge of WCW that had just gone out in business, was starting a group in Calgary called Matt Ratch, which was like kids professional wrestling. It was supposed to air on MTV. And they were looking for the top um, kid athletes from around the country. And I was only 17 at the time. And I sent in a bunch of videos of my amateur wrestling matches. And they called me and they brought me in to be part of the pilot. And, after I had my first match on that pilot and got a taste of pro wrestling, and got to meet some, some of my idols growing up, like the British Bulldog was there, and see Eric Bischoff in person, who I'd been watching on TV for a number of years, and be in, around the Hart family, um, seeing the Hart house in person. I didn't care about amateur wrestling anymore. It was at that point that I decided, I don't care if this pilot happens or not. I'm moving out to Calgary and I'm gonna try my best to be a pro wrestler. So I canceled my scholarships and I started my pro wrestling career. Fantastic. My wrestling name is Hannibal. I'm gonna smash your face! Hannibal is a dichotomy. He's uh, kind of an oddball. Well, Hannibal is a wrestler himself, maybe one of the most intimidating guys in all of professional wrestling. Of course, Hannibal, uh, that, holy cow, he's a different animal now, I'm gonna tell you. He's a Hannibal. He could be called a cannibal, but uh, so far he hasn't started gnawing on people. I'd say, in all honesty, about 95% of the wrestlers in Quebec are scared of Hannibal. What I've seen of him, he showed crazy, so that's why he's the best heel, because I believe it. Uh, a lot of the young new wrestlers are afraid of wrestling him because he's wild and he's crazy, and they don't know uh, which animal is going to be to the, in, into the ring that, that, that very night that he's going to wrestle. I didn't start off as Hannibal. It was kind of given to me by a famous WWE wrestler as my character. Hannibal got his name from Bushwhacker Luke, who's a former WWF superstar. He saw from my wrestling style that I reminded him of the character Hannibal Lecter from Silence of the Lambs. He thought, what better name than Hannibal? He looks crazy, he acts crazy, he's unpredictable. He seemed perfect. It has evolved into just brutal, likes to fight, no nonsense, he doesn't beat around the bush. He fights, he's pure action, mean guy, you would not want to mess with him if you met him on the street. He's just a great character and has actually become another side of my personality that I can 
switch in my life. It's actually a real part of my personality. I didn't realize that that character was really in me. I was doing it from the time I was, well, probably from the time I was a kid, whenever I would throw a temper tantrum at my parents. But uh, when I was in high school, I would get into the zone and I would become this character that's out there just to destroy. And when I started pro wrestling, I really wasn't Hannibal. I was kind of a lost guy learning my craft. But as I got into my groove in pro wrestling, that character came out more and more. And had a lot of ex-WWE guys and famous wrestlers help me with the character over the years, add things into it, tell me things that would be good for the character. And uh, it works. When I wrestle now, I'm Hannibal. When I need to do something that maybe Devin Nicholson in real life is kind of a, a shy, laid back guy, but, uh, Hannibal's different and sometimes I gotta snap into that personality to get some stuff done in real life that needs to be done that uh, Devin Nicholson just couldn't do. Devin doesn't play his character, he becomes his character. His talent is better than anybody in the WWE. He shouldn't even think about promoting. He should be thinking about wrestling in the WWE. I think he's right now the best heel in the indie scene. The kid's got a lot of potential. He's got the look, he's got the heart, he's got what it takes. I think the sky's the limit because WWE need guys like that. We're legit, they look legit, they work legit. I work with him, so I know he's legit. What I heard about Hannibal going to FCW in Florida in a tryout, what I, the report I had is he was the best guy in there. I was actually told at the camp by Pat Patterson, who is one of the top agents for WWE and a close friend of Vince McMahon, that I was the best wrestler at the camp by far. They told me that I was gonna get the call within a month after the camp. And I had the phone glued to me for that entire month, day in, day out, checking it every second. And it was torture, because I couldn't understand. I did so well at the camp. All the agents said I was the best. I was complimented on my promo skills, my, my look, my wrestling ability. Thinking to myself, why haven't they called? And on the 30th day, I had pretty much given up. I was extremely sad. I was confused. I couldn't figure out why. And I was driving to Napanee, and I felt a vibration in my pocket. I look at my phone. Connecticut. I almost had a heart attack because I knew that was a call. I just kept saying, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Pulled over to the side of the road. I was like breathing heavily, like I was going nuts. The sweat was pouring off me and everyone in the car, I was driving a couple referees and my student at the time who was actually gonna be refereeing for the first time that night, he was like, what's going on, Devin? What's going on? And I'm just like, trying to catch my breath, and I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. WWE called, so I picked up the phone, I listened to it, the message, and it's like, this is Ty Bailey and John Laurinaitis from Talent Relations, call us back as soon as you can. So I called them back, and uh, they're like, Devin, tell us why you would make the best heel in WWE. And I told them why, and they're like, Devin, you're right, we love you, we love your character, we love your attitude. We want to hire you. We want to offer you a three-year open-ended contract. And they went into all the details, and I didn't care. I'm just like, yes, 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 yes. And they said I was hired right there, and I was ecstatic. But that was the happiest 
moment of my life. Like, uh, whenever since you were a kid, you wanted something like that. Like, it's been your goal all your life to finally get it. Um, you can't ask for anything more than that. And I remember we were pretty close to the arena then, so we got to the arena and I uh, ran into the, the field. I told the guys just to, <laughs> we were running late as usual, but I didn't give a damn about the show at that point. I just ran into the field. The first thing I did was call my dad. I told my dad that I <laughs> got the contract. And <laughs> He was really happy <laughs> and uh, it was very tough. It's tough looking back on it, but it was a great moment because I know my dad uh, had been through a lot. He knew that I had been through a lot and uh, we haven't always seen uh, eye to eye, but at that point I know he was proud of me. And it was a great moment. Several weeks after getting his contract, Devin received a phone call from the WWE. They were rescinding his contract. Obviously, it didn't work out. The contract got rescinded because I have hepatitis C. So looking back on it, it's nothing because now what do my parents think of me? Yeah, like how proud. They can say to their friends, yeah, he had a WWE contract, but he just moved out of our house and now he lives in his, his friend's basement. He has a, he has a part-time job. Like, that's what they can tell their friends now. And they can try and say I had a WWE contract, but who, who knows if you can believe that or not. But I, I know I, have, I made my parents proud at that moment, but now it's like, my life has been for nothing, so it's, it's not a fun situation now. I started the treatment pretty much immediately after I found out that the contract was being rescinded. It's interferon and ribavirin treatment um, to cure hepatitis C. It's similar to chemotherapy. The treatment was terrible on me. I lost about 45 pounds. I had severe mental problems while I was on it. I developed tendinitis in my shoulder while I was on it. Um, I was never hungry. It was a horrible experience and the medication really screwed up my sleep. I was seeing a psychologist the whole time I was on the medication. And after one particularly horrible incident where I suffered a mild stroke, I ended up going, only completing 19 out of the 24 weeks of treatment. And although I was testing negative during the treatment, six months post-treatment, uh, the doctor dropped a bombshell on me that the treatment didn't work and I had gone through all that hell for nothing and uh, the hepatitis C was back in my system. And it was terrible because at that point, I thought I was going to be cured. Everyone thought that it wouldn't be back. I'd booked myself an MMA match. I was training real hard for the MMA match because I knew if I was cured by July 13th, I'd be able to fight in the MMA match in August because I'd get clearance. And I walked into the doctor's office and I should have known something was up when the psychologist was sitting in there in the doctor's office. And I just remember going in, big smile on my face had all my size back, was in a great mood and was talking to the um, psychologist about all the great things going on in my life. And then the doctor walks in and says, yeah, Devin, uh, the hepatitis C is back. And then my, my whole mood just, I felt like killing myself right there, to be honest. It was, it's like, what, I went through all this hell and it was for nothing and now I thought I was going to be cured and be able to get in WWE, but it's back. 
And I remember I called my dad. And my dad um, was just like, ah, that sucks. What are you going to do now? Wasn't very positive at all. And I called my girlfriend, who dealt with it by being mad at me. And it wasn't a fun day. It wasn't a fun day at all. Um, <laughs> really don't want to think about that day. Devin was unaware how he contracted hepatitis C, but after extensive research, one name came up, Abdul the Butcher. We are in trouble here tonight. But what's gonna go, what's gonna happen there? Surely Hannibal cannot lift Abdul the Butcher, who just oh. smashed a bottle on his head. Unbelievable. And the crowd going wild. And 49 years, boys, Hannibal is busted open, Rachi. Holy, Look at that. Oh my, unbelievable. oh my God. His head open like a faucet. You know what, Rachi? I've seen Abdullah many times, and I just can't get used to all of this blood. It's oh, unbelievable. It's a massacre. Man. You know, you can't even really technically call this stuff. It's just stab. Stab, stab. It's, it's an assault. If this is in the street, someone would be going to jail. Hepatitis C is a blood-to-blood -blood disease, and Devin believes he contracted the disease when Abdul the Butcher cut him with a tainted razor blade. I did not have hepatitis C in my blood at that time. That was before I started wrestling Abdullah. I have these matches with Abdullah, and suddenly I'm hepatitis C positive. During these matches, I didn't even realize he was cutting me. It was only when I went back and reviewed the footage after I found out I had hepatitis C and it was curious that I saw the footage of him cutting me. It's been a terrible year for me. Uh, WWE, the company that uh, I thought was the greatest company in the world, and. Never in my life could I have imagined doing anything but wrestling for WWE. I thought they were fantastic and despite knowing about my allegations against Abdullah the Butcher of him transmitting hepatitis C to me by cutting me after cutting himself with a dirty razor blade, they put Abdullah into the Hall of Fame. And not only did they put Abdullah in the Hall of Fame, but they've put out a toy of Abdullah the Butcher with blade marks in its head. And they put out DVDs of Abdullah the Butcher as recently as June of 2011, with Abdullah on the back bleeding all over the place. Based on everything that's happened, I'm not even sure I want to be a wrestler anymore. Not being able to wrestle in WWE, Devin began promoting his own shows and participating in non-bloody matches. I started promoting professional wrestling events in 2007 on my own. It became almost like an addiction. It's the ropes. It's the elbow drop. Big elbow Devastating. Wow, Psycho Sid. He was unique. He wasn't like the other promoters. He was going out there to give you the best show possible. Devin would book the best wrestler. He'd have the best matches. Unique storylines. Behold the world's smartest man. Is why all of you people in Thunder Bay don't like me. Pound for pound, I'm bigger than you, Lenny. Pound for pound, I'm stronger and you know it. He, he reminds me of everyone from Thunder Bay. The shows were an imitation of what he'd grown up with. Good boy. Perfect. You did it. I liked the fame I got out of it. I liked working with my heroes on a regular basis. I liked being on the radio, I liked being on TV, I liked being the boss. 
I've always had not very good regular jobs, so as the promoter, I finally felt I was treated with respect, and I'm all about respect. All I was thinking about was how much fun they are and, oh, this one didn't do well, the next one will be better. Devin was enjoying promoting, but was unaware that he was going to massive debt. I would say they lost on average three to five thousand dollars a show. In 2007 alone, I lost almost a hundred thousand dollars. 2011, I lost probably thirty or forty thousand dollars. Devin's bank account wasn't the only thing taking a hit. His relationship life was soon beginning to struggle. Of course, it affected my relationships with my family. First, they were encouraging it, but then they saw that I was putting all my time and effort into it. Like every second I had was put into promoting events and dealing with the egos of the wrestlers, arranging flights, arranging media, postering towns, tons of stress and all they saw was I'm doing all this stuff and it's tearing me apart and I'm not making any money at it. And they always were on at me to stop and I really wasn't listening to them. Um, I've had three girlfriends. Uh, my first girlfriend wasn't with me when I started promoting. My second girlfriend was and she actually broke up with me because of all the money that I lost on promoting. We were engaged, we were supposed to get married, but I just put all my money into promoting. And she, I guess I didn't understand it at the time. I thought she was the meanest person ever, but she cut me right off. She just disappeared from my life after uh, four years. And I really loved her, but all I could think about was wrestling promoting. My current girlfriend, has been very much against my promoting ever since she found out that they, the events lost money every time. And it's just one fight after the next over the, the promoting. And I've only recently began to realize she's been right this whole time. And our relationship has uh, had a lot of uh, problems due to wrestling. And uh, I love her, she's been good to me, but I don't know if it's gonna survive. I'm still in massive debt from the promoting. She's almost graduating law school. She's at the point where she wants to get married and it's gonna take a, a long time for me to pay everything off. I'm here today as I stand between my two grandparents' graves to announce that October 8th in Renfrew will be my last match. I've been wrestling for 10 years. I turn 29 in a few weeks and it's time to call it quits. Finally, it comes to an end. Finally, my parents kicked me out of my house and said, you gotta stop this. All my life, I couldn't imagine myself doing anything but being a pro wrestler, but recently, with everything that's happened with pro wrestling, I don't have any choice but to retire. Um, so I decided on October 8th in Renfrew, Ontario, that it was going to be my last match ever.
I think I've, I put up as good a fight as I could have, but uh, it hasn't be wrestling hasn't beaten me in the long run, but they, they won the battle. They haven't won the war though. I will win the, win the war. It's been several months since the completion of the This Is Hannibal documentary, and I now have a pet dog named Piper. She would make an excellent wrestler because she is very athletically skilled and has the personality of a true Hannibal dog. She is vicious and cute and has made a great companion for me going through a lot of this mental stress, dealing with hepatitis C, the Abdullah the Butcher lawsuit, financial stress and everything else going on in my life. I am very, very fortunate to have been able to get on a new experimental hepatitis C treatment thanks to my friend and mentor, wrestling legend, superstar Billy Graham. After my first hepatitis C treatment failed in 2010, I was told that it would be four to five years before I would be put on any new hepatitis C treatment. In that amount of time, the hepatitis C could do a lot more damage to my liver, which would not be a good thing. Professional wrestling is actually an athletic performance. We are athletic actors putting on a show for the entertainment of the fans. Yes, there are some very physical aspects of professional wrestling, but you never should cut your opponent without their permission. And you especially should never cut your opponent with a razor blade that has your blood on it. If you are hepatitis C positive, that puts your blood directly into the other person's bloodstream and whatever you have is now given to that person. So superstar Billy Graham was highly offended when he saw the footage of Abdullah the Butcher cutting me in the unsanitary cutting incident. And he was so offended that he publicly demanded to have his name removed from the index of the WWE Hall of Fame. Unfortunately, they did not uh, respond to his request and Abdullah the Butcher remains in the Hall of Fame in the year 2013. Now, superstar Billy Graham has wanted to see me get cured. He's uh, looked at me as a protege and this is quite an honor because some of his other protégés include wrestling megastar Hulk Hogan and Minnesota governor and phenomenal wrestling commentator, Jesse the Body Ventura. Now, superstar Billy Graham used to be the training partner of Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's participated in World's Strongest Man competitions. He's one of the most legendary figures in the history of professional wrestling. So I'm very honored to be his new protege. And I'm more than anything extremely grateful that uh, he has gone out of his way to make sure I get on a new experimental hepatitis C treatment. When he heard that my options for treatment in Canada were bleak, he got me an appointment with his liver specialist in Phoenix, Arizona. That liver specialist explained to me about this new experimental treatment that has so far been effective on hepatitis C genotype one patients, but is not yet FDA approved for genotype two patients. However, it can be prescribed if a person is able to pay for the treatment. Which was one of the scariest moments of my life as they basically take a giant tool into you. First of all, they freeze your liver, which is extremely painful. They stick a giant needle in there and freeze your liver and they tell you if you move, you could severely damage your liver and actually die or require emergency surgery. So first of all, they do that. Then they stick this giant tool in there and actually cut several pieces of your liver out. So you have to hold still 
for 30 seconds at a time while they're performing these operations. After this operation was complete, I felt like I had been shot. It was extremely painful. I also underwent several other blood tests and it was discovered that I already have um, scarring on my liver and damage to my liver due to hepatitis C. Liver biopsy is one of the most accurate ways to determine hepatitis C damage to the liver. So I sent these test results back to Dr. Rodriguez about possibly getting me into some type of program in the US, but I also sent these results to a second liver specialist in Ottawa, Ontario, Dr. Linda Scully, to get a second opinion. She was very interested in these test results, met with me uh, regarding these test results and uh, about Dr. Rodriguez's um, conversation with me about getting me on this experimental Inzefect treatment. She then attended a World Hepatitis C convention in Prague and discussed the possibility of putting me on this treatment with other doctors. When she returned from the convention, she explained to me that I would be able to get this hepatitis C treatment in Canada, however it would not be covered by the government. I have been going through this treatment since October 15, 2012, the day before my 30th birthday. It has been horrible so far. It's truly been the worst experience I've ever gone through in my life. I don't want to even talk about it. It's been awful. I've had to go to the uh, emergency room. I've uh, undergone severe itching, some of the most intense itching, which is the worst feeling I've ever experienced in my life. Uh, the feeling of literally wanting to scratch your skin off and there's nothing you can do about it. I've lost 31 pounds. I'm only sleeping two to four hours a night if I'm lucky. I'm undergoing severe mental stress. I'm on uh, antidepressant, anti-anxiety medication. Um, these medications help with my mood and are supposed to help with my sleep. So far, they have not been very effective with my sleep. I've lost over 30 pounds, and at this moment, I still have eight weeks left of treatment. But the good news is, I have been told by uh, my hepatitis C nurse that if I'm able to complete the entire 24 weeks of treatment, so if I'm able to hang in there and fight through these side effects for the next eight weeks, there's an 86% chance that I'll be cured of this disease and have hepatitis C out of my life forever. So I have a great support system this time. I have uh, not only wrestling fans of mine, but I actually have uh, hepatitis C awareness ad advocates, hepatitis C doctors, um, all sorts of people behind me and supporting me through this horrible treatment and they're in my corner. They want me to beat this disease and I have superstar Billy Graham in my corner, motivating me on the way, reminding me of the terrible side effects that Hep C has had on him in his life and how much I should not want to go through these side effects myself. So that's uh, a very positive thing. Um, for the WWE situation I was involved with, due to them rescinding my contract, due to me being positive for the hepatitis C virus. Um, that situation I am no longer legally able to talk about. Um, I am very happy, I'm in a good place in my life. I don't hold resentment against WWE anymore over that situation. I'm very happy that I was able to afford this experimental hepatitis C treatment, and I'm very happy that I'm no longer in debt. I don't have an extreme amount of money. I've had to go on sick leave while on this hepatitis C treatment. I'm only making a quarter of my regular pay. I'm not getting any sick leave money from my job with the city of Ottawa. Um, one of the reasons I believe the first treatment failed was because I was not able to go on sick leave. I didn't have a job with benefits. So there's a lot of good things going on in my life. I'm very positive for the Abdullah the Butcher lawsuit. He did provide us blood test results in December of 2011. 
indicating that he is hepatitis C positive type two, which is the same genotype of my hepatitis C. And I trusted Abdullah the Butcher. I was his protege. I had a lot of respect for him and uh, I feel he broke that trust. I looked up to him as almost a grandfather figure. I went out of my way. I tried my best to have the best possible matches with him, even though at the point I was wrestling with him, he was in his late 60s. I believe I still put on entertaining matches with him. And I was very hurt to uh, see the footage of, of him cutting me with the insanitary blade and taking advantage of me because I really looked up to him. So uh, that was unfortunate, but uh, he came to Ottawa, Ontario in December of 2012 to attend mediation. So the lawsuit is ongoing, it's moving. These situations are very slow, they're very expensive, and they're very time consuming. But I am extremely confident that justice will be served in the end. For my personal life, I'm in an excellent place. I'm happy that my last two hepatitis C blood tests have been negative. I'm excited and I'm confident that in September 2013, there's a very good chance I'll be cured of the disease. My relationship with my family has been better than ever, and my relationship with my girlfriend of six years has been better than ever. She has been helping me out greatly through this hepatitis C treatment. She has been like my own personal nurse. She has dealt with the severe emotional side effects that she has unfortunately had to experience. I feel terrible that she's had to go through these emotional side effects um, with me, but I love her very much and I'm happy that she is still in my corner helping me out along the way. This hepatitis C has not just affected me, it's affected my family, it's affected my friends, it's affected my jobs, it's affected me in every aspect of my life. It's affected my physical ability to do what I love. I can't even do things like lift weights right now. I can't even do uh, MMA training, amateur wrestling training, professional wrestling matches, because undergoing this hepatitis C treatment, my body just cannot do it. So it's really uh, has destroyed me, but I'm confident I will beat this disease. As I said in the original documentary, Hepatitis C may have won the battle, but Devin Nicholson will win the war. As far as my uh, future athletic career, if uh, I defeat this hepatitis C disease, I'll be able to get licensed to fight anywhere in the world. I'll be able to be licensed to wrestle anywhere in the world. Um, I'll be able to compete in amateur wrestling if I want. Since the original documentary was filmed, I actually went back into amateur wrestling after a 10 year hiatus, trained in Montreal with the Montreal Wrestling Club alongside phenomenal athletes and some of the world's best wrestlers, including MMA star, George St. Pierre. I had George St. Pierre's wrestling coach coach me at some tournaments, which was a huge honor. And it was great to uh, train with some of the top wrestlers in the world, truly world-class wrestlers. And uh, I shocked not only myself, but a lot of people in the wrestling world, the amateur wrestling world, when I was able to win a silver medal at the Canadian Olympic trials for the 2012 London Games. And uh, after a 10 year hiatus, that's one of my most proud accomplishments in my life. And I don't believe I'm done with amateur wrestling. The next Olympic Games is in Brazil. And uh, I'm not the type of person that likes getting second place. So. Uh, I wouldn't count me out for that. I wouldn't count me out for anything. As far as pro wrestling, uh, I love pro wrestling. It's my passion. I'll always be involved in the pro wrestling business in some capacity because it's what makes me happy. Will I ever invest huge amounts of money in shows again? No, I'm gonna be very careful if I prevent, present events, only one or two a year, and I'll be presenting them for fun not for the purpose of making money. It'll be a hobby more than, than something serious. And will I ever wrestle professionally again? You never know. Uh, my grandmother, who I'm very close with, would love to see me wrestle again. Um, my family, 
although they know that the professional wrestling business has been very hard on me. Um, they know that I love performing. Uh, professional wrestling is the best combination of acting, athletic ability, and showmanship I think there is in this world. And that's one of the reasons why I love it. It's my way to, to express myself. So will I, get, will I ever wrestle again if I'm cured? You never know. There's a chance I might wrestle again. There's a fairly good chance I might wrestle again in the WWE. Um, I could be a great talent for them. But uh, I'm not getting my hopes up. I'm focusing on treatment. I would also like to uh, have a few fights in the MMA game. But again, I have to beat hepatitis C first. But if I'm able to defeat this disease, the sky is the limit for Devin Nicholson. Devin Nicholson never gives up. He might be down, but he has never given up and he's not gonna start now. And Devin Nicholson will rise to the top, blow everyone away, blow all the doubters away and shock the world, I guarantee it, when I not only defeat Hepatitis C, but go on to do bigger and better things, not only by spreading awareness of Hepatitis C, but still going on and having a good and impressive athletic career. Thank you everyone for coming out to this movie. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm very proud of this movie. I'd like to thank the director, uh, Maximilian Moskal, for the, for the time and the energy he has put into this movie. I would like to thank the film festivals that have shown this movie so far. It's great to get the story out there. It's a true story of passion and, and love and hard work and unfortunately, um, extreme disappointment. I've gone through uh, points of I've wanted to kill myself, but I've never let it get that far. I've fought through it. I've, I've gotten help, I've had plenty of help, and, uh, and this is not over. Devin Nicholson is going to be around for a long time to come. <laughs>